Hey, it's Radical Dan. This is an update. It's about 55 degrees here. It's really beautiful out. Leaves are starting to change colors. It's starting to get winter time pretty soon. Now, there's a little update right here. I made my uh, little uh, zombie club things. It's uh, what was this one called? Headhunter? Yeah, this is the headhunter right there. Just half inch bolts put through aluminum bat right there and then this was uh, my brain surgeon so this is heavy it's a uh, angle iron right there that I just cut into the little notches in it that's my two little uh, walking dead uh, my wife said uh, they got something but he's got something on there called Lucia or something and it's just like really wimpy or something and I was like well here you go you can have these right here these are the this is the shit right here. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, it doesn't look like I'm gonna get enough walnuts to take to that place. Cause I've been looking around online to find uh, people, you know, having walnuts fall in their yard, come pick them up at. And I've seen a couple, but they're kind of far away. So it wouldn't be worth my time. So probably what I'll do with these is I'm gonna have to process them myself. Like I did the first year we were here. Just take all these hauls off of them and dry them out and then let them hang for like a year and uh, I had some this year that was left over from two years ago that I had done that to and I don't have any left but because I ate them all <laughs> but yeah I mean you can you just uh, take these holes off of them and then you let them dry out and it's just a little walnut shell and that's a different because these are black walnuts they're not like the English walnuts you buy in the store when you crack these open they don't have like two separate chambers. They've got like four. So it's really, really hard to get the meat out of them. But I mean, you, you can get them out. You can still like whack them with a hammer or whack them, you know, with a nutcracker or whatever. And of course the pieces will be littler or smaller, but they are really good. So yeah, that's probably what I'll do. And that's gonna be a shit ton right there. So, and see that rotten right there? That doesn't, that doesn't hurt it because that's just the, you know, that's just the outside coming off of it. Let me see, like here's some right here. I don't want to get too much into it because, oh, it looks like the squirrels have been getting into them, pulling them out. Yeah, they have. Check it out. Yeah, I see her. I don't care. There'll be plenty. But, see, if you get your hands in this stuff, it, it'll get real uh, messy. So, whenever you process them, you gotta wear gloves and stuff because it's like a dye. There's a dye in there and it'll dye your hands like uh, dark brown or black, or whatever, and it's really hard to get off. But see, here's one. Looks like they tore it apart already. But see that's just like what the, the nut on the inside looks like and then you hang these up in like a like onion bags or something like like netting something that lets air get to them but you don't let the animals get to them like you hang them up in your garage or something or in your attic and you let them dry out over you know a few months or whatever and then yeah like uh, the next year you come back and you can start cracking them open and I mean they're really really good and I mean it was free so I just just whatever dropped on the property and I've actually seen some in the stores. You can actually buy the little black uh, black walnuts for like cooking and stuff. I got them in the little bags and they're oh, they're kind of expensive. So if you can get them yourself, it's a uh, lot better. But now what I was gonna show you was uh, not anything important, but I'm working in the camper today. Yeah, customers get squeezed to spend I got this little battery. <clears throat> Let's see. I got this little lawnmower battery right here that's, that's charged up on the solar panels. You can see it's running 12 and a half volts. And I just got this little cord plugged into a little radio. So I've been running this little uh, weather radio off this battery. While I'm out here working, gotta figure a way to hook this uh, burner up. Oh yeah, because I got the uh, gasifier on the front of the camper. I'm going to use this little gas fire. The one I showed in a video about where I was cooking and I've showed earlier ones where it was running the motor. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the front like this and then I'm going to run the piping underneath it. And then it's going to tee off on the inside. It's going to come up to something like that little propane uh, grill or that propane cook stove or that little one that I used in my video. I'll just build a little cabinet top on there and put it in there. And then I'll have like uh, the fan and the control over here. That way I can, you know, start firing in, in the gas fire. And then I can, you know, turn it on here. And then I'll have like gas coming out here like I can cook with or I can heat with. 
But then on the back of it, I'll tee it off underneath and come back here. Like here in the back, I'm gonna set a plate down here somewhere. And I'm gonna mount that little tiny, that little three and three quarter horse, or that four horse motor that I used in my earlier experiments. I'm gonna mount it here and I'm gonna put a car alternator on it. Which is a, you know, it's not, technically it's not a generator. But when I put a couple, you know, batteries in this camper, then the, uh, then I can run the little motor off the gas fire. It'll turn the, the alternator and it'll charge up those batteries. Like if you're not, solar panels aren't running or it's nighttime or whatever, you can actually keep your batteries charged up. And uh, so that will keep, that's kind of like a uh, enclosed system. I think I'll actually take the alternator out of this uh, S10 <clears throat> because this S10 is going to be my uh, reverse trike when I get time to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this whole frame and everything off because the motor runs, but it's just got a, it's got a <clears throat> leaking head gasket. So, yeah, I'm going to take the, I'm gonna take the alternator down there off of it. And that's what I want to cut that little motor. There's lots of good stuff in here that I'm going to salvage. Basically, I'm going to strip this down to the frame. <clears throat> and in the frame, I'm going to cut and bend the back end of it and form it together in like a V shape. So I'm going to leave the front end with the suspension and the steering. And that's going to be your steering. I'm going to put seats in it. I'm going to try to put a motorcycle on the back of it. So I have like a three wheeler, but a reverse trike with the one wheel in the back and the two wheels in the front. But that's a project for later. But like right now, like I said, I can use parts off of like a, it's got a good air compressor. I mean, a good uh, AC compressor. I'm going to take the windshield wiper motor off of it and hook it up to a uh, hacksaw and make a power uh, hacksaw. But, yeah, see right now it's storage for uh, aluminum cans. See, it's almost full. It's all aluminum cans that I use in my forge when I melt down stuff. So I got a good supply of aluminum. <laughs> so, yeah, and I'm gonna try. I got, I found, I got, I found one of my old tanks right here. It's empty. But what I'm gonna try to do is when I get this uh, fire this gasifier up, I'm looking for a compressor. I just got an air compressor the other day, and I, I don't think it's gonna be able to work because I need an air compressor that's got like a threaded fitting on the inlet side where it sucks the air in. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook it up to this gasifier, and then once it's burning. And then I'm going to use the air compressor to suck the gases out and then compress them in a uh, propane tank. So I'll run up like 100 PSI, 120 PSI. And then I can actually hook this up and use it, use the compressed uh, charcoal gas. Instead of running the uh, gasifier, I can actually run off the compressed uh, charcoal gas. Which uh, I haven't done yet. I've seen it done. I haven't done it myself. But once I can do that, then it's another option. Because I can get... Uh, I can get the big tanks. Like I got this one on this air compressor. It's got a really good deal on this right here. This tank right here. It's like one of them hundred pound uh, propane tanks that they or yeah they converted something like that. And then that compressor right there, which it works. They I mean it, it came together. I just took it apart, but it came together and it was like thirty five bucks. I couldn't do that. But this doesn't have the intake on this. It's uh, it's not going to work because uh, I don't know if I can take it off right here. But uh, anyway, the intake on it is uh, just got a big wide uh, area with like a foam piece in it. So I mean, it just sucks the air in from the outside, and I can't restrict that. And the whole idea of compressing the charcoal gas is that I can't mix it with oxygen because then it becomes explosive. So I need to pipe it directly from. And see my the compressor that I use. This is what I use in the shop. And I see it's actually got, now see I could use something like this, but this is what I use for my air, so I'm not, I'm not tearing this one down. But, I've been looking at different ideas. It's uh, like two cycle motors. Like I've got a little two cycle motor right here that I was thinking about turning it into it, but I'll have to restrict, I don't know, i have to restrict this. Because when the piston comes all the way down, then it opens up through here, so that would let extra air come in. I don't want to do that. Probably, I might take one of these. I might take one of these lawnmower engines and just put a set of two-way or make a two-way valve on the top of it and then take the camshaft out so the valve stays shut and that way every time it comes down it'll suck air in one side and when it comes up it'll blow it out the other side. So I mean that might do that. That might be the simplest way to do it. But here's another air compressor that I got 
for free, but it's all tore down. It's an L2 cylinder, but it's the same problem because if you look at the top of it, yeah, that's where the intake comes in. There's two little slots down there. That's not going to work. So, but yeah, anyway. That's what we got. Just a little quick update. Wanted to show off my little uh, zombie uh, weapons that I got. Been selling some of them, which is pretty cool. I mean, if I get enough interest in them, I mean, I just might start making a bunch of them and just sell them, you know. Put them online and sell them or set up a flea market booth or whatever. I don't know. Because I enjoy doing it. I mean, it's fun. <clears throat> it's fun stuff to do. I was working on this right here is one of the pieces that I cast out of my forge the other day. I'm trying to turn it down because I'm thinking maybe I can make a uh, adapter, a subcaliber adapter out of aluminum, but for like 20 gauge. So if I can take the 20 gauges and put them in an adapter and then I can shoot them out of the 12 gauge. I need to make something for the 410 also. Now see, I found this old bearing. It works, but it's actually too short. Because the 410 goes perfectly in there, but see it sticks out. So when that when that would shoot off, it would mushroom at the end, and you'd never get it out. I don't know if that worked for a long coal, like 45 long coal. It's that same size, but I don't know if it's the same length or not. I don't know. I don't have any, so I can't really. I can just guess. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I got. Beautiful Sunday in Ohio. A little chilly. Just a sign of things to come. You can see all the leaves and everything everywhere. I'm glad I don't have to rake leaves. That would suck. But, yeah. Alright. Have a good one.